Um, so, so this this session today is about uh, Azure OpenAI and Power Virtual Agents. I think I think there's been, and I want I want to do something a bit different today. So I think there's a lot of hype in the OpenAI space, um, and I think a lot of it would just a lot of the stuff being developed would just not be that useful um, when we fast forward 12 months down the line. Um, and so what I want to do today is really encourage you to think about a or help to inspire you to think about a problem to solve and how you can solve that using Azure OpenAI and Power Virtual Agents. I think a lot of people are going in and building some cool stuff, but um, six months, 12 months down the line, it just won't be that useful. So um, I'm actually going to give you an example of a um, the result of an in internal hackathon we did at my company, which is Vast Minds, um, where we actually thought about a specific problem, a niche problem, uh, and how we can map that to a solution in Azure OpenAI using Power Virtual Agents to deliver something of, of value to customers. Um, so I think a lot of people are focusing on solution. What I want to do is just inspire you to focus on um, the, the problems or challenges that you could potentially, or specific problems and challenges that you could potentially solve. Because in my opinion, that will 10x your ability above everyone else. Um, but just to give you some background, I, I think I should probably introduce myself first. So if you if you don't know me, my name is uh, Nick. Uh, I have been an AI engineer for more years than I can count. Uh, I started off working in financial services, uh, where I was. My role was a um, uh, as an algorithmic trader for investment banks like Nomura and Cowan and Company and Credit Suisse. Um, I was part of the original team at Nomura that were um, deploying uh, machine learning algorithms for hedge fund clients, um, up to the tune of. Uh, close to four billion dollars a day uh, that were running through our algorithms. Um, I then founded a company called Vastminds, which is a healthcare technology business in 2019, um, and that is primarily focused on delivering uh, physiological insights about a human uh, by analyzing a video of their face. Um, and so we have customers such as insurance companies, virtual health platforms and telehealth providers. Um, and I've also been playing with uh, GPT technology and their APIs for a number of years. Um, I also do compete in their in their uh, global hackathons that they run unofficially. Um, I competed in three. Uh, I was the winner in November 2022. Um, haven't had time, unfortunately, to compete in another hackathon, but I definitely will get a chance to um, to do that again. So, um, I so again, coming back to the point of this uh, this talk, um, I'm going to show you an example of how we built a product that has value to potential customers just by understanding um, the, the the problem space that we're going after here first. Uh, and let me share my screen and so the whole point of this to help is to help you not just go out and start building something cool with open ai um, but actually think of a specific really niche problem that you could solve using um, pvas power automate and open ai i think that trio is such a powerful combination i don't think many people realize that yet um, and obviously as as individuals who are much more familiar with Microsoft technology, I think you you are a step ahead of the competition. So um, so this is a product. Uh, the name is called Chat MSP uh, because we couldn't think of a better name to, to name this product. Um, but essentially what we did is we, we thought about a specific problem um, that a, a specific market is having. Um, and this market was managed service providers so or also known as msps um if you don't know what an msp is an msp is like a business that you would outsource your it support to so an msp would manage um 
multi would would let's say be uh, you, you you could have for example BMW coming along to say I don't want to have my internal IT support desk I need this outsourced to someone to an organization that is a professional organization they keep up with the latest trends and key insights about how to conduct the best IT support I don't want to have to manage that insight so I will hire an MSP to do that so that is what MSPs are MSPs there, I mean, there are thousands of them across the globe. It's not a, it's not a huge market. It's actually pretty niche. Um, they, they, they exist to help businesses run without the headache of IT support. It's not a typically exciting business, um, but it's necessary, right? I, I would say this, this would be in the class of boring SaaS businesses, but um, sometimes they are killer businesses. So. Um, there's a couple of so the first thing we want to do right like and, and I'm I, I fall into uh, myself and my other engineers we fall into this trap a lot where we go in and we start building cool stuff. Um, I would say the first step to do is if you if you think of a, um, a a business or market a niche market that has a specific problem, try and document four challenges that they may face. So what we did here is. We spoke to uh, five MSPs, right? Five. That is, that is enough, uh, and we documented some challenges. Um, and what we learned was pretty interesting. So again, I'm I'm not thinking about using an OpenAI uh, API right now. I'm just thinking about what what are the challenges that this this um, this market faces. Um, so we found something pretty interesting. Um, the first was what we like to call documentation delays. So if I'm an MSP um, and I'm a analyst, um, I, I'm a support desk analyst at an MSP, if I get an incoming query from a client, a lot of my time is spent trailing through online documentation that is held in SharePoint um, or OneDrive to try and find the right information that could help me with a specific query. So it might be, you know, for example, um, let's come up with an example. Um, a, customer, a, a customer ticket would contain information about a specific printer not working. I mean, I'm thinking of uh, just a silly example here. Um, and what support desk analysts do today is they have to think about, okay, I need to go to the file which tells me how to deal with printer issues. And I need to find the printer that they are um, they are referencing, uh, and I need to find exactly what are the steps I have to do to resolve this. So you can imagine for every incoming ticket, that could be quite a boring and laborious process. Um, so the first one is what we call documentation delays. It just takes a long time to trail through documentation. Um, the second one is information overload. So typically, support desk staff right and i think everyone here has probably experienced this um you are probably whether you consciously are doing this or not you expect the support desk recipient to remember too much information and as humans we simply can't uh remember too much information um and what i mean by this is if you raise a query you expect an answer pretty immediately now, for that to happen, that person on the other side of your query would have to remember a lot of information to be able to do that, right? And so this can cause delays in resolution times, which can lead to dissatisfaction. Um, the third one is, is, well, MSPs as a business, they exist to serve clients who need to outsource their IT support desks. The issue is, Every time they onboard a new client, they would need to hire two or three more staff to support that client. And that makes sense. You have more query volumes. You need more support desk analysts to serve those clients. And that's OK. But, you know, when we're, we're in we're in 2023 now, just past Q1, um, it looks like we're still heading towards a bit of a recession. Um, businesses are tied on cash. So what you have now is a scalability problem. And so this is another challenge. 
Um, and, and, you know, the fourth one, everything comes back to this fourth challenge here was as an MSP, how do I increase my profitability? So they, they always need to find ways to serve more clients without a proportional increase in cost. So how can I serve two times the amount of clients without a 2x increase in my cost? You know, a, a great uh, a great solution to this is serve two two x more clients with maybe a 0.20% increase in cost, not a two x increase in in cost. So those were the the four main challenges, and I, I would just encourage everyone to go through uh, this exercise with with any market or any market or any problem that they, they want to to solve. Um, it's it's really uh, it is really, and I'll, I'll show you how we've now mapped these problems to a solution using PVA, Power Automate, and um, OpenAI. So um, what we did is we, we took those problems and we thought, OK, well, we can actually solve all of those problems using an intelligent agent that is able to scour through a deep knowledge base. That's the, the first key thing. Uh, scour through a deep knowledge base to understand how to best resolve incoming tickets. Um, and, you know, some knowledge bases include things such as SharePoint, which is just OneDrive. Um, you have also MSPs, we learn, use a specific type of documentation called IT Glue um, and also Hoodoo. And what we also learn is that they manage tickets through what's called IT service management solutions. Um, and these can include things such as ServiceNow, ConnectWise, and Autotask. So what, what do I mean by an IT SM solution? It is just a support. Uh, it's just a support portal for service desk analysts to use when they're handling multiple tickets. That is it. That is that is all they, they, they are um, designed to do. So you have an incoming query come in. A ITSM solution would assign it a ticket ID and you can respond and add notes to that ticket ID right in this portal. So it's just a portal. That's how I would want you to um, to think about this. And OK, so this is an intelligence support agent is able to gather, amalgamate all of these different pieces of information. So documentation about how to deal with clients It's look, able to look at existing tickets in a ticket ITSM solution. It's able to look, to look at the web because, you know, GPT still has the ability to understand information up to September 2021, um, you know, just in the World Wide Web. Um, and so it's able to amalgamate all of this information into what we call now Chad MSP, which is kind of looking like this purple brain here. Um, and that purple brain is able to do a lot of a lot of stuff. Um, and so what happens now is the new workflow for MSPs or uh, managed service providers is the following. So we have an incoming query. This comes from a client, uh, which is usually very time sensitive. Um, the first person to now get it is not a human. The first person to get it is, or the first person to analyze this would be Chad MSP. Um, and it's able to integrate with all of those sources of information to come up with an answer about a specific query. Um, and then the first line service desk, because typically when you have a, a service desk, you have first line engineers, second line and third line. Um, the first line engineer can take that response from the uh, from the engine and respond to the client. And that that response can be you know, fine tuned with a bit of clever prompt engineering to actually come up with a way that first line engineers can respond uh, without having to search through mountains of documentation um, or mountains of existing tickets. You know, one thing they do a lot is if you have an incoming query about a specific problem, they will spend time going through their ticket portal database to find out, OK, was there any other similar queries that I have experienced or that my team has experienced in the past to help resolve this? Uh, if so, how can I look at it and get some you know, clarity on, on, on how to resolve this? So the whole point is this is now a seamless workflow where you could get an incoming query 
you can go from incoming query to resolution um, in a pretty seamless workflow. Uh, that is an absolute uh, game changer for support desks. Uh, I guess the next iteration is where the first line engineer is just a intelligent agent. Um, so you would only have, I guess, second and third line engineers at that point. Um, but in, a, in essence, this is a, a seamless workflow that any managed service provider um, can can use. Now, uh, I, would want to, I do want to show you a demo. Um, so what I will do is I will bring up Power Virtual Agents uh, here. By the way, it, it'd be great if you just, um, I, I want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you could just put in the chat from a scale of one to five, how familiar you are with Power Virtual Agents, uh, that would be great. That would just give me good understanding of whether to go a little bit deeper or I don't need to go deeper. I could just stay at the high level. So um, if you just put in the chat, just give me an indication of how familiar you are uh, with Power Virtual Agents. So it's Dinesh says new. Um, OK, well, let's say if it's new to one person, I should probably oh, one out of five. OK. So one, we've got three. I think I think we should probably start from ground zero then in that case. Great. Anyone else? Fantastic. All right, let's start let's start from from ground zero. OK, so power power virtual agents. Um, it's a really powerful platform to deliver uh, custom bots uh, through different channels very quickly. Um, you could deliver bots through uh, you can embed bots even in websites. You can deliver this through Microsoft Teams. Um, you can deliver this through other channels using your own custom bot. So what I'm going to do right now is just show you, just given that we're, we're starting from scratch, I'll show you how to just create a simple bot. So one thing you would do is you'd go here, you'd click Create, um, you would click Build for Production, and you'd name your bot anything. So I'm going to call this, um, let's just call this, uh, bot test four, uh, and I will select English for now and create. Um, so every bot you'll see is comprised of topics, and these are just essentially conversational flows. Um, but I'll show you exactly what happens. So um, it will spend maybe 30 or 60 seconds working on a bot, um, and it's, it's just effectively going to give me a boilerplate template to start with. That's that's the whole goal here. Um, so if you if you've never tried uh, building a bot on Power Virtual Agents before, um, I would definitely encourage you. What I will do is I'm going to put this link in the chat. I'm sure you may all know it. Um, I would definitely encourage you to try and start uh, building uh, a simple bot with uh, PVA. Um, and it's really intuitive. It's really simple. Um, doesn't require it's completely low code as well, which is which is great. Um, OK, that took a bit longer than I th thought, um, but anyway, we're here. So once you create your bot. Um, oh, OK. Great, we have a question. By the way, if there's any other questions, just please stop me. I, I do want to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so we have a question. What is the difference between uh, power virtual agents and Power Automate. So great question. And I'll show you exactly how the two come together to build a pretty powerful solution. Uh, so Power Virtual Agents is about creating custom bots. Power Automate is about creating custom workflows. Um, and when you have a bot combined with custom workflows together, uh, you have something pretty powerful. And I'll show you exactly how that works. So. Um, so this is just a simple bot I created. Uh, one of the things you will see um, is you will see something like topics here. Um, and topics are just conversational flows. So if I hit overview, I can go to topics. Um, if I look at the greeting topic, um, a couple of components you have here, you have trigger phases, messages. Um, and a trigger phase is effectively a phrase to look for to start this type of flow. So if I go ahead and click uh, test bot. And let's say um, I say something like, um, 
hello. You'll see, for example, this flow got triggered. So you see quite nicely that flow got highlighted green across the whole board. Um, and if I wanted to change how the bot responds, I could just say, hi, I am a super intelligent bot and I can do anything. And I would hit save. Uh, once it's saved, I can test bot again. And I could say hello. And you can see it responds with something different. So it is that easy to modify how, you know, to build a, a, a custom bot and get it to respond in a way that you would want it to respond. Um, so the first concept is you have a bunch of topics and you have topics relating to, um, you know, greetings. Um, you have custom topics here. Uh, if we look at the, these are boilerplate topics. So for example, um, this topic is related to opening hours of a store. So you, you could imagine you could have topics are kind of um, specific workflows that are based on specific topics. So it could be opening hours. It could be um, it could be things like uh, where my current order is. So order status, things like that. Um, so that's the basic concept of uh, Power Virtual Agents of Topics. Uh, now, just going back to the uh, to Chad MSP, which is the the product built using Azure OpenAI and PVAs, this is where Power Automate comes into play. So, quick touch point on on Power Automate. Power Automate is a um, a tool where you can customize flows, and those flows could be specific things um, and you have pre-built flows such as you know it's very similar to uh, Zapier um, you have specific flows such as uh, save Gmail attachments to your Google Drive automatically so every time you get a Google Mail with an attachment it will save it to your G Drive right it will also notify you on Teams when you receive an email with negative sentiment right these are just very simple workflows uh, so you consider this is not a custom bot. This is not an agent. This is just a simple workflow. So it is very powerful in the context, though, of OpenAI. So if I go back to chatbots and I go to Chat MSP, which is the, the product we were creating for managed service providers, if I go into this, uh, I'm going to show you the structure of this bot. So you can actually see these simple boilerplate to topics. We don't have them on anymore. It'd be it would be a nightmare to have to define. You know, the problem here with Power Virtual Agents is it works well, but you have to define specific topics um, so that it, it can interact with the user. But the, the whole promise of OpenAI is that I don't have to define any individual workflows. OpenAI should know exactly how to solve this problem for me. So the, the good thing is we only need to define uh, one, one flow, which is resolve ticket. Um, uh, this is a flow that I made that integrates with Power Automate to resolve a ticket. So before I do that, I'm actually going to show you a quick demo here of how it works, which is probably much more interesting. So uh, what I'm going to do is bring up test spot. Uh, I'm going to say hello. It will respond to say, hi, I'm Chad MSP. I can help you resolve tickets in your ITSM solution because that is how I how I built it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. Uh, so a typical support desk analyst would say I need help. Resolving. Resolving. A ticket. And it says. I can help you resolve a ticket. Please give me the ticket ID from your ITSM solution. So it's now prompting me. It's already connected. This is actually a, a bot we have with a live customer. It's already connected with a, uh, a support management portal, and it's just prompting me to give it a ticket ID. Um, and so if I am going to get an example ticket ID, um, this was this ticket ID relates to this won't mean anything to you. This ticket ID in the customer system relates to someone having issues with their, their outlook. So I'm going to press enter. Um, now what happens now is a powerful power automate flow gets triggered. Um, 
and I'll show you exactly what happens. So the bot says, great, I'm checking ticket ID 191 for Drupal 5. Uh, and so what it's doing right now is it is scouring. You can see here, it's, it's actually taking some time to think. Um, but what it's doing right now is it's scouring through an entire knowledge base for a specific client, looking at all of their documentation, looking at uh, all of their tickets in their ITSM solution, even looking at the web to come up with the best solution to this ticket ID or to a ticket. Um, and that can take some time and that, that can take up to 30 seconds, right? We haven't really done any optimization on this front, um, but that can take a that can take a lot of time. Uh, Tuhin has a question, go for it. Uh, so can power virtual agents be used for internal enterprise chatbots or is it only for customer? Yeah, absolutely. PV, PV agents, you can deploy, you can imagine having this deployed on your internal. Um, you could have actually imagine having this deployed internally within Microsoft Teams, and I, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, so it doesn't need to be customer facing. You can actually the, the good thing about power virtual agents is you can configure this to, to appear anywhere. Um, OK, so great. So it's actually given me a, a detailed answer. I, all I had to do was give it a ticket ID. Um, and you can see it's given me a detailed answer about what to do. Um, and it's triggered here a power automate flow. So don't worry if this looks confusing. I will go through it. Um, and it's saying to resolve the issue with logging into Outlook, please follow these steps. And it's giving me detailed steps based on all of the existing tickets, based on all of the documentation um, about the specific issue on how to resolve this. So you can consider this a highly fine-tuned agent uh, uh, that is, you know, is telling us how to resolve this. Not only that, it's actually told us which uh, uh, documentation it used to help it. So it's used things such as setting up a new user in Outlook, setting up email on Android. I have no idea uh, what those documents mean. Those are a customer's documents. Um, and then it says, how would you rate the uh, answer from one to five? One being the worst, five being perfect. We don't need to do that. But essentially, you can see that I now have built a open AI agent that is highly tailored to solve a specific problem for a specific use case. Um, and so now the, the main power resides in this step whereby we call or we trigger a power automate flow. So what happens is we have in the usual PVA setup, we have a trigger phrase. We ask a question. So it says, what can I help you with today? So we we have a greeting. What can I help you with today? I need help resolving a ticket. It then moves to another topic. Why does it move to another topic after I say I need help resolving a ticket? That's because I've set up a trigger phase to look at things such as tickets um, or resolve ticket or check ticket to move to a topic called resolve ticket. And what that does is it asks a question about which ticket ID that it needs. Um, and I would just respond with the ticket ID. It would save that response as a number variable. And this is how you can specify that. Then it would tell me, oh, I'm checking this ticket ID and it would call a power automate flow. This is the I would say the best thing about power virtual agents is integrating it with power automate flows. So if I uh, if I look at this. If I look at this flow. You could see here I've created my own flow and I'll show you exactly what it does. We can see that this this wow. This took one minute and two seconds. This, it clearly needs some heavy optimization. I mean, that is, it should really only take 30 seconds at max. But anyway, um, what this flow does is it takes an input from Power Virtual Agents, which is a number, it then call, makes a HTTP request to an Azure function, right? So what you've got to do is for, 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 for PVA to, to interact, um, so, OK, we got a question here from Dinesh. So, yes, this is our own bot using GPT-4. Um, so it is a bot that is fine tuned with specific data and answers question relevant to it. Exactly right. So what Power Automate does is it would take an input from 
the Power Virtual Agent, it would post to an Azure function. Uh, and if I show you, um, if I show you, this is the function here. And so if you're not familiar with Azure Functions, um, it is a great way uh, for to run event-driven code um, on a serverless compute engine. Um, it, it's effectively just like hosting a piece of code that does something, that's all it does, right? So the, the intricacies of Azure Functions are outside the scope of this, um, this, this, uh, this call, but I'm happy to go through it in a, maybe another webinar if it's, if it's useful. Um, but essentially, it makes a post request to an Azure function. Now, inside of this Azure function is a GPT-4 wrapper, which effectively takes a ticket ID, which we saw in the previous step. Um, it posts it to this function. This function just throws this to Azure OpenAI. It gets all of the relevant information, uh, like I mentioned before, such as existing tickets, documentation, looks at the World Wide Web to come up with a response, right? So the body of the request is just a ticket ID. Um, then the response looks something like this. So it, it might look a bit technical, but um, it's it's pretty simple to understand. The response looks something like this. I, I, I It returns an answer object. It returns maybe similar tickets that could have helped it in coming up with an answer. Um, sources, which is helpful. Maybe there was specific documentation that really helped in coming up with an answer for this uh, for this uh, this problem, and it also gives gives me back the ticket ID. Although I think you know maybe we should change that because it's absolutely pointless. Then what I can do when I pass this JSON, that means I can take every individual object and return it back to PVA. So I could see here I can now take the answer, the answer object, and I can take the sources object, and I can return it back to Power Virtual Agents. And if I go back to my flow, you could see here power automate outputs gives answer, which is comes in text and sources. So now is that now starting to make sense about how power virtual agents can interact with power automate flows? It's, it's really powerful. And then what happens is we simply trigger a couple of messages, which is an answer and a sources. And so the answer is this. This thing here, and then we have. I use the following sources to help me. And we put this, we put a dynamic placeholder here, which is sources. So I use the following sources to help me, this document, this document. And then it asks, how would you, you know, this, I guess this last bit is just a bit of fun. How would you rate this answer from one to five? Um, and then we call actually another flow. Uh, and all this flow does is if we go to, um, we go to this flow and edit, all it does is it just makes another HTTP request. So it takes in the answer from chat MSP, takes in the user rating, the ticket ID. It makes a post request to another function, well, to the same function, but a different endpoint called add notion entry. And it simply adds an entry in our database, uh, in the database um, just for, um, you know, just for, for, uh, for feedback purposes. So it's helpful to know. Um, so you can see in this entire workflow, we have a highly trained uh, Power Virtual Agent bot that is able to serve a specific client. Um, so let's have a look. So we have a question. Yeah, so, OK, question from Dinesh on the chat, and then I'll come to you two here in a second. Um, so a product support. So the question from Dinesh is a product support ticket and their responses are proprietary. Uploading it to GPT-4 doesn't breach compliance. So uh, that's a good question. Um, the, the way you need to think about it is uh, a, a, a customer's, um, a, a customer's, let's say, ticket information, as well as their documentation, has to be actually amalgamated into a vectorized format, which is not just a bunch of text. You, at that point, you are not giving GPT-4 a bunch of text to understand. You are giving it small pieces of vectors to understand on how to generate a response. So in, in the actual GPT-4 call, we're not sending all of the documentation. We're not sending all of the existing tickets uh, that has existed. 
all we are doing is giving it in, inside the prompt, we're giving it information about similar tickets that have occurred. And that's that what's called semantic similarity happens outside of GPT-4. So all you're giving to GPT-4 is a you know, highly generic prompt that is specific to a customer, but GPT-4 doesn't have any existing uh, reference to existing tickets or documentation. So that's how you get around the, the compliance problem. So um, uh, two hidden, you have a question. Uh, so clearly I can see that the integration of power PVAs with other power platform tools like Power Automate benefit businesses, which brings me to a question based on the ticket system example. What type of analytics and reporting capabilities are available for Power Virtual Agents? Great question. And there is a very simple answer to that, which is this button here, analytics. It is that simple. So in a snapshot, if I was to deploy this bot to a customer, I would be able to see how many sessions have occurred, how many people have engaged with the product. Um, I could see actually pretty detailed analytics um, about the use of this, um, this product. And I could see that um, most of the, I can see which flows are getting trigger triggered. So we have two flows here or two top main topics. The first is greeting, hello. The second is resolve ticket, which is resolve ticket. I could even see uh, topic triggering, um, which is not here. This feature checks for similarities, so I won't go over this. Uh, customer satisfaction, I haven't seen this one before. Uh, sessions, okay, I can see how many sessions we have. And then billing, we could just see how many build sessions um, we have. But summary is really the main page where you can see all of the analytics. Um, and I could also see the escalation rate, which is the um, percentage of sessions which actually end in escalating to a human. So if let's say if this bot is not resolving the issue, you can escalate this uh, to a human. So um, to him, does that answer your question? Is this the, the type of analytics that you are trying to, to gauge about these these bots? I, I, I will assume it, it does. Um, but anyway, OK, so great. We built our, our Power Virtual Agent and that's that's fantastic. Um, but the issue is it, needs, it still needs to be in a customer's hands. It still needs to be used by um, by someone in a useful way. Now, the other great thing about PVAs is if you go to publish, you can what's called you can publish your bot, uh, but you can also configure channels, which is great. It means you could deploy your bot to Microsoft Teams. You could deploy it to a demo website, customer custom website, a bunch of things. Uh, and if I go to uh, demo website, I could go here, paste the link, and I could see I have chat MSP here right in the demo website, right? I the, it, it would be able to respond in the same way, right? That's a great channel to have it. Now, what about if I want to have this what, I, what about if I want to make this available across my entire team so my entire team can benefit from this? Well, I can just go ahead and publish this on Microsoft Teams. And you can see here it's already got name Chat MSP. I can click Open Bot, Open Microsoft Teams, and voila. Oh, what happened there? Open Bot, Open Microsoft Teams. Fantastic. We have Chat MSP, which I can add directly to Teams. And great, I could say, I can chat with it directly within Teams. So now everyone now has access to a powerful bot, which is embedded directly within Microsoft Teams. Like, how amazing is that? Uh, you can you can publish this to to many channels at once, and I can interact with this. I can share this bot with other team members, so it's now useful. You know, a lot of managed service providers work within Teams every day, so. Um, this now becomes a useful channel to communicate with a uh, PVA bot. But um, that is essentially this 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 bot and how to build it from from scratch. Um, was there any other questions about this specifically before we go to wrapping uh, this up? Uh, no. Oh, we have another question. We have someone someone else's hand is raised. 
uh, to him. It looks like your hand is raised still. Do you have another question? So can Power Virtual Agents be used for voice enabled chatbots in addition to text based? That's a great question, actually. Um, hmm. So it depends. I, I don't I don't believe I'll need to check that, but I don't believe that they could take as input a voice. Um, I mean, you could definitely build uh, you, you, you could definitely build. Um, you could probably build a custom bot which takes voice as input, uh, whether that's available through Power Virtual Agents, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so what kind of license will be required for PVA for channel? Do we need separate licenses? So you can get started with PVAs for free. Um, so you can see here, yeah, I have a free trial that expires in eight days. If I look at the pricing, you can have a look at the pricing, which is really readily available on their website somewhere. Let's have a look. OK, maybe I'll find a pricing link and get it, but you can definitely try it out for free for a period of time. Um, as I custom asked, anything around Azure functions it's calling. So yes, actually, in each of the uh, in each of the so in the topic resolve ticket, uh, we have two power automate flows. They both call an Azure function. So that's pretty important to note. Uh, both of these call an Azure function. So if I go into view flow details, you can see here if I click edit to see what's going on underneath this flow, it's making a HTTP post request to a function, which is enabled here. Function Neo Agent. Why was it Neo Agent? We thought you know the, the original name would be Neo, um, but you can see the endpoint here is resolve ticket. And um, if I go to Azure Functions itself, uh, let's see if I can do that. Oh, I might have to sign in again. If I go to Azure Functions and I go, we've created a function app called Neo Agent. Um, and here we have the URL. Now inside of the function script, we have an endpoint, which is resolve tickets. All that does simply is it takes in ingest tickets and it spits out a response that that's all it does. So yeah, Azure, uh, when we're making HTTP post requests, I do like Azure Functions. You could also do, uh, you could also deploy uh, simple apps to Azure App Services. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's that, that's also a, an option. Uh, so we have another question from Dinesh. So OpenAI can already respond uh, to answer the questions chat based on my data set. Um, why we needed Power Virtual Agent on top. OK, so so yes, uh, good question. So it can actually based on your data set, it can answer questions about it. But what we're doing here is we are in, we are actually deploying a seamless workflow. We're deploying a seamless workflow that can work with an existing system, which is an ITSM solution here. Um, and OpenAI cannot it does not have access to an MSP's ITSM solution, it does not. So what we are doing here is we are cleverly using Power Automate to seamlessly integrate with those solutions so that we provide a seamless workflow. Like for, if you think about if you think about the role of a support agent, they have to answer tickets all day, right? So they don't have time to go to ChatGPT, upload all of their data sets, then ask the question. They just don't have time to do that. With Power Virtual Agents, you can create a seamless and custom workflow um, that is you know, orders of magnitude more beneficial than just having um, a question and answering on your own data set. Um, but aside from that, that, that is where I want to uh, wrap up today. I hope that inspires you to build. Um, I hope that inspires you to build uh, with with PVAs and also Power Automate. Um, and also start with thinking about the the problem and challenges in mind, um, and that is how I think those types of solutions will emerge as winners. Whereas a lot of solutions that are being built right now are probably considered hype. So uh, I hope that helps. Thank you. Bye bye.